Hey guys, um, I'm Lindsay Height, and the photographer that I selected is Margaret Bork White because she's basically a feminist icon in photography, especially during the early to mid 1900s. For my project, I chose to research Margaret Bork White. I chose her as my subject because she had many firsts in her field. Her work is also very unique and intriguing because of some of her subjects were hard to come by. Overall, she was a very independent and successful female photographer, so that is why I chose to study her and her work. Margaret was born in the Bronx, New York, on June 14, 1904. She passed away in Stamford, Connecticut on August 27, 1971, at the age of 67 years old. Her mother's name was Minnie Bork White and her father's name was Joseph White. She had one brother and one sister. Her brother's name was Roger Bork White and her sister's name was Ruth White. She grew up in Boundbrook, New Jersey, and both of her parents were well educated and encouraged education in both of their children. She got married at the age of 35 to Erskine Caldwell. The two divorced a mere three years later and she never remarried. She had no children, and her main and only occupation throughout her life was a photographer, more specifically a photojournalist. She spent most of her adult life in New York and Ohio, as well as traveling to Russia and World War II sites for her career. She got into the photography field because she was inspired by one of her teachers in college named Clarence White. She transferred universities multiple times and ultimately got her Bachelor of Arts from Cornell University. Prior to studying photography, she was focusing on herpetology, which is the study of amphibians. She got into photography because her father was an avid amateur photographer and she grew up around photographs, also because her professor in college inspired her. She was strongly influenced by Arthur Wesley Dow. She grew up in a household of educated parents who encouraged her and her siblings to pursue their dreams, as well as to grow up as an educated, well-spoken person herself. Her father and mother specifically encouraged her to do what she had interest in. Her style of photography was that of photojournalism and documentation. In most of her photographs, the techniques of visual center of interest, visual perspective, and distance are noticeable. She contributed the photographic essay technique to the field of photography because she used the technique so often. She also broke many barriers for women in the field of photography, as well as gender roles in general, that they didn't have to fulfill traditional societal roles and could have successful careers in the various artistic fields. She became famous while working for Life magazine, where she photographed black people under an advertisement depicting the stereotypical American dream. She also photographed Gandhi just hours before he was assassinated. Pertaining to her subjects, she liked to understand their background, to get an idea of who they are as a person and why they behave how they do. Most people see her work as striking and very impressive or intriguing, partially due to the black and white medium as well as the dramatics of the subject, such as the struggles and tragedies depicted in her photographs. I personally see her work as impressive and intriguing as well, because not many photographers during her time went to the lengths that she did in order to obtain the photos or tell the story that she told with her work. She was the first Western photographer allowed to take photographs of the Soviet industry. She was also the first woman to be allowed to work in combat zones during World War II, and she was the first female photographer for Life magazine. Margaret photographed Nuremberg after the Allied bombing in Germany in 1945. The photo captured is an area in Nuremberg after the Allied bombing. The medium of the photograph is gelatin silver print. The photo uses two of the elements of art, shape and value. Value is clearly depicted throughout the image due to the varying white, gray, and black shades. Shape, on the other hand, is used and portrayed by the buildings and their shadows in the photograph. The photo also uses three of the photographic composition techniques, visual center of interest, distance, and visual perspective. Visual center of interest is present because the viewer's attention is drawn to the large building in the center of the photograph. Long distance is clearly used because the photo was taken from a very long distance away. Visual perspective is present because she took the image from a bird's eye view, which is an upper angle, probably from an airplane. Lastly, the principle of design that is present is emphasis because the destruction and buildings are emphasized in the photograph. As previously mentioned, Margaret photographed Gandhi hours before his assassination, and the photograph is titled Gandhi, India, 1946. The photo captured is in his room in India from behind the perspective of a spinning wheel. The medium of the photograph is also gelatin silver print. This photo, like the previous, also uses two of the elements of art, which are shape and value. 
The shape in this photo is depicted through shadows and lighting on Gandhi himself, as well as his belongings in the room and the silhouette of the spinning wheel. The value in the photo is demonstrated through the varying shades of gray and white produced by the lighting and the medium used to take the photograph. This photo also contains three of the photographic composition techniques, which are visual center of interest, rule of thirds, and informal balance. The visual center of interest is depicted by both the spinning wheel as well as Gandhi himself, both of which the viewer's eyes are drawn to. The rule of thirds is depicted because the spinning wheel takes up the left two-thirds of the frame and Gandhi takes up the right one-third. The informal balance is depicted due to the spinning wheel taking up most of the frame, causing the balance to be asymmetrical and uneven. The principle of design technique that is used is emphasis because Gandhi is emphasized in the background by his size in frame as well as being in better focus than the spinning wheel in the foreground.